From finishing as the last playoff seed, losing a play-in game, to making the NBA Finals, from undrafted to unforeseeable, from Jimmy Buckets to Hemi Buckets, the Miami Heat's unbelievable journey won't be forgotten. Opposing head coach for Denver and Mike Malone rightfully wants his team to forget about where Miami finished in the regular season to avoid complacency, but it can't help but be admired that Miami's become just the second team in the 76-year history of the NBA to make the finals as the number 8 seed. It's also a noteworthy narrative that Miami lost to Boston in Game 7 of last year's conference finals, but would beat the Celtics exactly a year later in the exact same scenario. More of a storybook moment than that are the odds Miami's overcame specifically in these playoffs. Everyone was picking a 58-win Giannis-led Milwaukee team that won the championship two years ago to take down the Heat in round one. Miami took care of business in five. Those questioned if Miami could stack up against a Jalen Brunson, Julius Randle-led New York squad in round two, a Knicks team who won their previous series to Cleveland in five games. Miami took care of business in six. ESPN gave them merely a 3% chance to beat the Celtics. Miami would jump out to a 3-0 series lead and ultimately take care of business in seven. Despite having to steal home court advantage in each round, all of those feats were seamlessly accomplished. Therefore, it shouldn't rattle the Heat's locker room that they've now been given an 11% chance to take down the powerhouse Nuggets in the finals. Caleb Martin has been this Heat team's breakout star who averaged 19.3 points per game on a shooting split of 60% from the field, 49% from the three-point line, and 88% from the free throw line in the conference finals. Martin had four 20-point games the entire season, but has already posted four 20-point games in the playoffs. Heat center Bam Adebayo detailed the work ethic behind closed doors, which Caleb's displayed that's led him to providing the offensive value that he has. A lot of people don't see the work that Caleb put in. Y'all see it now because he, he's playing out of his mind, but after that game seven loss, it's not my mom, it's not my mom. After that game seven loss, I feel like he made it a necessary effort to really come back and be like, I'm going to be a reason why we win a series or be a reason why we win big games. And he showed that throughout this whole series and I, I'm truly proud of him. One, he's from North Carolina. Uh, so just representing North Carolina is a, is a good thing for us. But also, man, he gets the opportunity to one, win a East Conference championship and two, he gets to play in his first finals. A storyline that hasn't been mentioned in this video is how Miami bounced back from a heartbreaking Game 6 L they took to Boston after Derek White's buzzer-beating putback. When asked about how the Heat pulled it together to win Game 7 48 hours later, Caleb Martin mentioned how determined this Miami group has been all year, saying, It sheds a lot of light on how resilient our group is, how mentally engaged we are. Caleb's a product of Heat President Pat Riley, having pulled off something definitively one of a kind with this Miami squad, because next to six fellow role players on this roster, Martin is one of seven players a part of the 15-man unit that heard 60 draft picks go by without hearing their names called, players who use that disrespect as sticks to their fire to this day. One of those undrafted players is three-time NBA champion and a member of the all-rookie second team back in his first season, Wiley veteran mentor Udonis Haslam. UD capturing his fourth chip in what will be his final season would be an incredible moment for he, Spo, fans in Dade County, not to mention Pat Riley, who was the coach of this team when Haslam and this organization won its first chip back in 06. But with bones to pick this year specifically, in addition to Caleb, the likes of Max Struess, Gabe Vincent, and Duncan Robinson are out to prove to Denver's front office and front offices around the association for that matter that they deserve to be selected in their respective NBA draft class. Miami's two other undrafted players consist of backups Haywood Highsmith and Omer Yurtsevin. But despite the undrafted players a part of the rotation in Martin, Struess, Vincent, and Robinson being all 29 years of age and under, this roster is polished off with two NBA champions looking to become two-time champions who've quite literally seen it all that can still contribute, and firstly Kevin Love, but specifically a man who could still contribute in Kyle Lowry. Veteran big man Cody Zeller's never been a champion, but 
he brings solid balance to the team in terms of the fact that, unlike much of the roster, he was a high lottery pick being the fourth overall selection back in 2013, but the now 30-year-old is a forgotten piece to this group that can also give you solid minutes up front. All of this success has occurred minus 2019's third overall pick, Tyler Hero, who's been out with a fractured right hand. Many in Tyler's position would have avoided the team while being out with an injury as their team's gone on to have success without them. That can often be a tough pill to swallow for a player, but it says a lot about Hero's character that he stuck around to support the troops while dealing with a prolonged setback. You somehow watched this entire video without hearing about probably the most egoless superstar in today's game, Jimmy Butler. Even after all Miami's accomplished collectively in these playoffs, in addition to what Butler's accomplished individually, being historically clutch performances, it's evident Himmy doesn't want to bask in the moment too much. I just know why Coach Pat and Coach Spo wanted me to be here, and that's to compete at a high level and to win championships. I know that the group that they put around me at all times is going to give me an opportunity to do so. So I, I was always very, very confident in that. I worked extremely hard with the team. With Brickley, I can score on Remy all day, every day, as I've posted on Instagram. So I'm just confident. I know the work that we all put into it, so I know what we're capable of. But nobody's satisfied. We haven't done anything. We don't play just to win the Eastern Conference. We play to win the whole thing. Additionally, despite Butler posting a team most by far 28.5 points per game over the course of 17 playoff outings, performances in which he's tallied a grueling average of 39.4 minutes played in, he doesn't think less of any player within his supporting cast. I don't call them role players, I call them teammates because your role can change any given day, especially with how many games I've missed and you know, in and out of lineup, off nights, whatever you call it. We got some hoopers, we got some real deal basketball players that can score, can defend, can pass, um, and can win games for us. With the humble leadership of Jimmy, Combined with the more aggressive leadership style of Coach Spolstra, the Heat's cast of talent has been in great hands, which has allowed them to mold their style of play perfectly to playoff basketball. During the 82-game season, Miami owned a negative point differential. They were 30th in points scored. They lost their first play-in tournament game to Atlanta. They were trailing with three minutes left in their second play-in game to Chicago yet proceeded to beat two teams with the first and second best records in the NBA in Milwaukee and Boston. Due to that overcame adversity, those who are dismissing their journey or counting them out entirely against the favored Nuggets evidently don't phase this Miami team whatsoever. And they're hungry for more. Jimmy is hungry for more after all these years of playoff shortcomings including a 2020 Finals loss caught on camera during the Heat's Conference Finals trophy presentation, Butler declined to hold the trophy, saying to Bam that he'll hold the next one. The Larry Bird Conference Finals MVP is far from done quite yet.